So there are really only three great ways to do a neck lift in my opinion. So there's totally non-invasive, there is less invasive, and then there's a traditional neck lift. I do think that the traditional neck lift is probably best for most patients. However, for your specific reasons, you may not want to get it. So the first one is less invasive or non-invasive. Essentially what we can do is we can give a lot of Botox or neuromodulator right here so that it relieves the muscle bands of the neck. It actually elongates the neck slightly. We can give a lot of injections here which also relax the muscle so that in general your neck will appear more elongated. If you have a really large submandibular band somewhere around here, we can actually give you Botox or neuromodulator to actually shrink it. Finally, we can actually fill in the horizontal lines that you may have in your neck with filler or with fat grafting, and we can also rejuvenate the neck skin. Now, obviously this is all less invasive or non-invasive. It tends to work best in younger patients, and also it tends to work best in patients who don't have a lot of loose skin in the neck area. If you're really not a big fan of surgery, or maybe you're not ready for surgery, and you're a bit younger or simply don't have that much loose skin, I think this is a really great option. There are other ways to rejuvenate the skin as well, including RF microneedling, microneedling with other devices with no radio frequency, and things of that nature where you may have a lot of skin slough, but that will definitely tighten up the skin a little more than simply getting neuromodulator, fat grafting, and other less invasive techniques. Next up is a limited incision neck lift. So I do think that you have to be a little younger with not much loose skin to even be considered a candidate for this. So we really only approach the area through a small incision right here underneath the chin. And we can do two things. We can either remove the fat or we can do liposuction of the fat. That's right underneath the skin. Next, we have to look at the platysma muscle and look underneath the platysma muscle and actually remove what we call subplatysmal fat, fat underneath the platysma muscle. We may have to carve out and shape the anterior belly of the digastric muscles. I know, a little nerdy, but these are the muscles that are around here so that if we can shave them slightly, we can actually sculpt and shape your neck so that it has a more sharp angle. We can also remove part of the submandibular gland here. In other words, the part that's sort of hanging down or descending. We can actually do liposuction here along your jawline to give it a more sharper sculpted definition. Now, this implies that there is no incision behind your ear and there are some limitations to this. Again, if you have a lot of loose skin, I don't think you're a really great candidate for this approach. Likewise, if you have sort of slight to moderate loose skin, we can tighten it up with devices and techniques I've just mentioned, including microneedling, RF microneedling, fat grafting to the horizontal areas, and other skin rejuvenating procedures just along the neck. It's really not gonna tighten up the neck as much as surgery. However, if you really only wanna have one incision, if you simply don't have that much loose neck skin, this may be a good option for you. Finally, the best option, but again, probably the largest option in terms of surgery and also recovery time is a traditional neck lift. Now, hear me out. We have to make an incision sort of in your earlobe and behind the ear to get right underneath the skin. We still have to make an incision around here to get access to the platysmal muscle and the midline. So from the sides, we lift up the skin and we release it so that it'll connect to this area here. So most of the action occurs in the midline where I make a small incision here and we remove the fat above the platysma muscle. In other words, it's just underneath the skin but above the muscle. We still go underneath the platysma muscle and if you have deep fat there, submandibular gland, you have sort of a prominent anterior belly of the digastric muscles, we can actually carve that out so you have a sharper jawline. We have to make an incision sort of behind the ear so that we can go underneath the skin and pull to the side and it's mainly to the side so that the loose skin is tightened. Now this is the very interesting part. Because I'm actually able to tighten the platysma muscle in the midline and physically tighten the platysma muscle to the side and really reattach it, there's actually a little less need for me to remove fat right underneath your jawline because your platysma muscle, which is over time becoming a little loose, slightly saggy, not as tight as it used to be, I'm retightening it and I can surgically retighten it. We're not relying on any device. We're not relying on Botox or neuromodulator. So I can really use the platysma sort of as an internal neck sling right around here, and you get a much sharper jawline that way. The best sharpest jawline compared to the two other methods. 
There's also another advantage of this method. Because it's suspending the jawline area and really sculpting it, I generally don't have to remove much of the submandibular gland right around here. Remember, it falls down and not in all patients, but in some patients it tends to descend. I would much prefer to leave it alone if possible or physically remove a little less of it and resuspend it up by tightening up the platysma muscle. This way, both directions, right there. And so that allows you to have really the best result. Now, yes, I'm a surgeon, I may be biased. I do think this is the best way to do it. And you may not be very ecstatic about considering surgery. Having said that, the nice thing about doing a neck lift is the incisions are behind the ear. They're, they're very difficult to see. The other thing is if you get this procedure done when you're younger, this means that yes, you'll probably need to get another neck lift or combine it with a neck lift facelift down the road, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. But if you are younger and get this procedure, the recovery is a lot faster. I don't have to remove as much neck skin. You get that really tight suspension that you cannot get with any other technology. And the incisions are pretty well hidden so that the recovery is not only fast, but even after the recovery is done, it's very difficult to see those incisions, especially with your hair down, even if you have short hair. Those are the three major ways to rejuvenate your neck. I hope that my explanation was easily understandable. If you have any questions about this, please fire away and let me know. If you have other topics that you want me to discuss, let me know. And if you have questions on how I think about whether you're a good candidate for facelift or not, here's a great video right here. Thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.